8th Bridge, which is recognized as the first company to enable the selling of merchandise on Facebook back in 2009, has released a new social commerce platform called Graphite. The platform is said to usher in a new era of social commerce that will provide more opportunities to both consumers and retailers. And to find out more about this platform, we're going to bring in Wade Gurton, 8th Bridge's CEO. It's great to have you today, Wade. Hi, Abby. Thank you. Hi, you're very welcome. For starters, just tell us what Graphite is. Well, Graphite is the uh, the first social commerce platform that was built from the ground up to be easily integrated with someone's existing channels and the systems that they have. So we, um, I think it's a it's it's pretty exciting for us. It's the most exciting thing that's happened since we invented the category uh, back in two thousand nine. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, for two and a half years or so, we've been focused mostly on creating social shopping experiences on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So in a Facebook app or on a Facebook fan page, and what Graphite enables us to do for the first time is take those sh those social shopping experiences and let them run mm -hmm. in your existing channels. So on your website, in your brick and mortar stores, through mobile apps, in any other channel. So I think. From our point of view, we think it's the um, we think it's probably the time when social commerce really starts to put some real revenue numbers on the board. Because mm -hmm. up until now, the amount of distribution that we've seen has been fairly small because we're limited to just those users that might find you as a brand on your Facebook fan page or in a Facebook app. That's very interesting. Well, I understand that Graphite not only utilizes the, the, the Facebook Open Graph, but it really built upon it. So can you talk a little bit about this? Uh, yeah, so we, um, so we started working with the Facebook Custom Open Graph team uh, late last summer. And um, so we're, we've been a beta partner with them for quite a while now. Uh, Ticketmaster was sort of our beta launch of the Graphite technology in January. and. Um, and now we're going live with over a dozen brands in the, in the coming days, um, more on their existing website. So the most common implementation of this has been integrating uh, Graphite into their existing uh, websites. Mm -hmm. And so the, what the custom open graph does is for the first time gives companies like us an opportunity to build kind of relevant, interesting social experiences that run off of Facebook. Mm -hmm. You know, where before the custom open graph was available, um, you were fairly limited in what you could do. Maybe you could do social sign-on or you could add a like button mm -hmm. to your website, but that, to us that just wasn't that relevant. Mm -hmm. um, where now we've got far more capabilities. It's, the, uh, Facebook's technology is far more open now. Absolutely. We're able to do something, I think, much more interesting and more relevant um, off, of the, off of the website. Right. Well, let's get into to some of the benefits for specifically um, for, for consumers as well as retailers. Can you get into these for us? Sure. So what um, one of the key things that Graphite does is it makes it really easy for someone that's visiting your website, so a shopper, mm -hmm. to easily express how they feel about your products with their Facebook friends. Mm -hmm. So now it's really easy for me to say, I, I love that Fender guitar <laughs> or I got to have that red dress, right? <laughs> or, or whatever it is that you're, uh, that you're really interested in. So mm -hmm. it makes it easier for someone to kind of bring a brand into their, into their Facebook timeline mm -hmm. and kind of associate themselves with the brand. So from a consumer's point of view, it's a much better way to share mm -hmm. uh, things you care about with your friends on Facebook. And then what will happen is you'll discover a lot more interesting products from a lot more of your friends than you do today. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's so much easier to do that. From a brand's point of view, um, what it brings you is a, is a much more powerful way to engage in social commerce because the, you know, after working with dozens of the, you know, we've worked with more major brands in this space since we launched the company than really anyone else. Mm -hmm. And the number one thing that we've learned is that people drive social commerce, not brands. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is if, if you add it up, Almost all of the shopping activity on Facebook over the last two years or so, 90 plus percent of it is uh, someone sharing a product with another friend. So it's me sharing a, a pair of jeans that were on sale with you or me invite you to go to a concert with me uh, through Ticketmaster or to go on a trip with me through Delta. Mm -hmm. And it's that person to person sharing that drives 
social commerce. The opportunity isn't for a brand really to push offers to you mm-hmm. on Facebook. Really, the last thing you want is spam from from retailers, for example, on Facebook. <laughs> you know, right. It's more interesting to get to see what your friends are interested in and get and get products shared that way and discover things from your friends. So, um, so what brands are getting out of this is a much more powerful social commerce platform that. Um, because it's integrated with your diff- your existing channels and because it's focused on letting people spread the word of mouth right around around your offers, I think that uh, they'll get far more uh, online revenue uh, from this new approach, kind of this 2.0 approach than what uh, what we first started back in 2009. Right. Well, since social commerce is still relatively new, um, many brands have you said that there's sort of been the challenge of, of selling too much or socializing too much and not really finding a balance. So what can you tell us uh, about this challenge and really what Graphite is, is capable of doing to prevent it? Yeah, that was that's always been an interesting objection that we've run into with brands before that they didn't really want to use Facebook to sell. Mm-hmm. They wanted to use it to communicate. And... Um, What's kind of funny, that I think it's a little bit ironic that, you know, a lot of, uh, of us social media um, type companies and gurus have been telling brands to, um, to create a real conversation with their, with their customers on Facebook. But if you actually add up all the conversations that someone has, very, very few of them are on Facebook. You know, very, they're, they're in your stores, right? They're on your website, they're through your email communications, they're in your call center. And so what... What we're doing now is we're letting letting a brand leverage all of those existing channels mm. to open up their brand to let their customers that are already talking to them in all those existing places to more easily share things with their friends on Facebook. Mm. So we think the amount of sharing will be you know, the the volume of the sharing will be much much higher um, than what they could have gotten if the only place you could really share something was off of a uh, Facebook app. And then buried inside Facebook, right? Right. So, in your opinion, is this type of social commerce really the the future of online shopping? Yeah. So we 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 had this goal of reshaping e-commerce around people mm-hmm. since we started the company. And if you think back to the '90s, when most e-commerce companies got started or retailers launched e-commerce divisions, mm-hmm. all we really did back then is we took our product catalogs that were paper and we made them digital. Mm-hmm. So that they can run on a website, right? And for the last decade or so, we we've used Google to try to drive traffic to those stores, to those catalogs. Um, and and still, after all this effort and all this investment, while it's grown dramatically, e-commerce is still usually less than ten percent of your total sales. If you're a multi-channel brand, wow. The reason it hasn't become more significant. Um, is it's because it's not really how we shop. So we're, we're rarely go and buy something because we're on a mission to go buy something. <laughs> and so when, when you go to Google and you search for something, you ha- you're on a mission to buy a new bag or to buy, um, to buy a new laptop, whatever it might be. But actually, probably 80 cents to 90 cents of every dollar we spend is spent on things we didn't quite plan to buy, mm-hmm. that we, maybe we didn't even really need, but we discovered something fun from our friends, and then we decided we had to have it, right? right? <laughs> so that's actually how most of us shopped. Mm-hmm. And, um, so what we're trying to do is, is bring that characteristic, um, that offline characteristic, online, mm-hmm. and um, make it easier to discover things from your friends versus having to already know what you wanted to buy and go sort through a product catalog and find it and buy it, right? Right. So for brands that want to work with 8th Bridge and Graphite, what can they do? So our, um, we're pretty easy to engage. So um, Eighth Bridge is a software company. Uh, we do have expert services around our software, but um, to leverage the software, it's a classic software as a service kind of business model. So you pay a monthly fee to access the technology. Um, it's a really quick setup. So the whole point of Graphite was to try to make it really easy to launch a multi-channel social commerce program. So. Um, so it's as, for us, it's as easy as adding the like button was to someone's website. It's 90 minutes in uh, programming support from IT. Wow. And then from there, it's really up to the, the marketing and the e-commerce business teams to run it. Um, we do help people get kicked off. So we have a, 
strategy team uh, led by a guy named John Kubo that was most previously the um, SVP of e-commerce for Wet Seal and the CIO for them. So really, and a very well-known, very, very uh, respected guy, thought leader in the space. So hit John's team sits down with each brand and helps them figure out different tactics and ways to approach it, and maybe different ways to, to add sharing to the, to the websites. Mm. But then from there, really, it's, it's sort of a lights out approach. Okay. You know, a lot of, um, a lot of social media um, strategies have been more campaign based up until now, um, where you're promoting a new product and the goal was awareness and buzz. Um, what we're doing now is to, is to build more of a perpetual, long-term program that sort of lights out. The marketer just has to sort of set it up to say what are the types of shareable things and things people can say and ways that they can, express, they can express how they feel about the products, but then they're kind of done. And they kind of have to just get out of the way and let their customers kind of do the, do the promoting for them after that. So it's a, it's a much different approach than what people have seen before. Well, that's good. Things are definitely changing. Thanks so much for talking with us today, Wade, and best of luck with this new platform. Thanks, Abby. You're very welcome. And for more information on Graphite, visit eighthbridge.com. Reporting for WebPro News, I'm Abby Johnson.